What's going on YouTube? Today I'm here to show you how to diagnose a no charge situation in this 2002 Toyota 4Runner with a 3.4 liter V6. Customer said he was driving down the road and the battery light came on and the longer he drove it he said the weaker everything got and eventually it shut off just when he pulled in his driveway so luckily he made it home without having to get towed but he had to have it towed here so either way he still made it home which is always reassuring. I've been there done that with my own cars. I'm going to show you first how to diagnose this, start, this alternator and then I'm going to show you how to replace it as well. Now I already know what it is, I've already diagnosed it, but I'm going to show you all how to do it. So let's get started. First thing I'm going to do is turn on this jump box because the battery is completely dead and I'm fairly certain this battery is going to probably recover because it's brand new so we're probably not going to have to put a battery in this. Let's get started. And if you haven't subscribed to my channel, please subscribe so I can continue to make videos like this to make your life easier. Let's fire this bad boy up. If you notice, the battery light staying on, even with the jump box hooked up. So that means it's definitely getting below 13 volts. All right. Yep, 1220. You can touch it on either terminal, it don't matter. Well, that's with the regular voltmeter, but this is a little mini scope. But you also want to, crucial, pop this little cap off on the alternator and make sure that voltage wire is getting voltage down there too. If you lose connection, they won't charge. And we are. So that pretty much confirms the alternator's bad. I've already got the part, the customer's already approved it, and I'm going to show you how to do it. Shut this off before it gets too hot and harder to work on. And I'm doing this outside because it's uh, cooling off finally here in Hotlanta. And we're going to call this uh, outside edition today. But to set that aside because we're going to have to use that when we restart it. And we're going to have to leave that jump box hooked up for a few minutes because you don't want to strain the alternator. Until that battery recharges. So let's set that aside. All right. Huh, that's funny. I recognize the writing on that belt. I do that when I do timing belts. So I'm guessing I did a timing belt on this not too long ago because I use white out to identify the belts if I'm reusing them. All right, first thing we're going to do is we're going to disconnect the battery, the 10 millimeter, positive, negative. Don't really matter. I'm going to disconnect the positive. Lean that aside. Out of your way. The less clutter, the easier it is to work. Let's see if we can get that bad boy down there. Nope, not going to happen. But, go figure. I don't have my tin out. Well, I got the little stubby tin. Let's try that guy. I thought I had my swivel out here, but I don't. Yeah. Whatever. In a busy day, so y'all know me from my previous videos. I always got a lot of clutter going on. Never no time to straighten my tools up. All right, get that out of the way. Your battery wire. Then we're gonna come over here and unplug the actual pigtail for the computer. That's kind of in a weird spot, right by the manifold there. Let's get this wire and harness out of the way. Just a second here. Some little pliers down there. Plugs being all stubborn. Come on, baby. Come on. There we go. Don't want to break that tab. Especially these older cars right by the manifold. I'm surprised it didn't break. You get brittle. Right, you see that's secured into the back of the alternator too. So 
I'm gonna pop that bad boy out. And that that is brittle, so it broke, but that's okay. It's not gonna hurt nothing. It's not gonna touch nothing. All right, now we got those two out of the way. We gotta loosen the bottom 12 millimeter bolt for the tensioner. Let's see here. You can't really see, you just gotta kinda feel. See, I think I got a deep well over here out here with me. Yeah, even better. Might need that swivel though for the actual screw on the tensioner. All right, set that aside. Don't want to lose that bolt. All right, now we're going to loosen. This top 14 bolt. I'm gonna do that with a ratchet because that, that bolt's usually tight. <sighs> yeah. Don't want to break my ratchet. Alright. Now we'll go ahead and take that bolt out. Definitely don't want to lose that bolt. I don't have any spare bolts that big. Not that long anyways. That thread's pitch. Bend that little harness out of your way. And it's a 12 millimeter bolt nut for the actual tensioner because this is an adjustable tensioner. I don't know if you can see it or not, but it's right down there. My camera's catching it. Gotta turn that counterclockwise. And I might do that with the... Sometimes you can put a socket on there with your fingers. And that's kind of tight, so... Let's see, I got an idea here. It's been a while since I've done one of these alternators. I've done a couple in my day, but... Bend that out of your way. Maybe we can get the electric ratchet on that bad boy. Life a lot easier if I can. Come on baby. That, that little hump right there where the light is. There we go. That's a good angle. Yeah. See the tension coming off that belt? Screw it out just far enough to where you can take the belt off. And we're going to reuse that belt because it still looks fine. We already got that nut out. That bolt loose. Now a little pry bar action. Boom. Just like that. Alright, she's out. Now, word of advice, unless you want to be putting an alternator on this every six months or a year, invest a couple uh, extra dollars in this Denso. Because uh, that's a Denso original and it lasted 200,000 miles, I think this car has on it. So, it's up to you if you like doing things uh, two, three, four times a year. I mean, this is not a hot or very hard alternator, but I don't know about you, but I don't make money doing the jobs twice, especially if it's under warranty. So, now if you notice, there's a little reset tab right here and sometimes you gotta press that back a little bit. And they're kind of a pain. So, uh, let's see if we can get the pry bar in there. Sometimes you'll get lucky and it'll go right in. Sometimes not. Let's see. Let's 
see if we can hit it with a pry bar. Push it back a little bit. I think it did move a little bit. Unless I'm seeing things. I thought it moved some, but maybe not. Okay. I guess that's going to be the hardest part of this job. Just getting that dumb tab reset. Let's try the extension. you got to be careful. You don't want to booger that thing up because the bolt won't go back through. Hmm. Try a longer pry bar. Yeah, that might work. Got a better. Hmm, maybe. Did it move? Looks like it might have. I guess my eyes are deceiving me today. So, I don't want to drop that. Get this out of the way. Make sure I didn't booger that up too much. We're good. Of course, when I'm doing a video, things always want to fight me when I'm trying to make y'all's life easier. Hmm. Not sure if it moved or not. Let's try. Let's try something else. Too hard on an alternator. Yeah, well, it's gonna fight me, so he'll just hang in there with me. Hmm, let's see. I wonder. I'm going to go in here to my toolbox. And throw everything at it. One of these is going to get it. And being that's the original alternator, I'm sure that little ring has got a lot of rust around it, so that's not helping. That got it. Now I can see it. <sighs> yeah. Usually when you got something that's this easy to do, it's always going to be something that's going to fight you. Never fails. Cars have minds of their own. They're like, oh no, it ain't going to be that simple, brother. Get 
that one lined up first. Get in there, you little shit. Part of my French. All right, that started. Now that bottom bolt, you can see it. Some things you're just not going to be able to see on camera. But there, I got to pass through the hole. It wobbles a good bit, so it's not too hard to line that one up. Go ahead and get these bolts started too by hand. Don't tighten them down yet. Put your belt on first. Make sure it's on all the grooves and not hanging over because it'll t separate your belt. It'll rip a big old rib off of it. Alright, now we're going to go ahead and tension it. I'm going to tighten this bolt down by hand as much as I can to the adjuster bolt clockwise. Alright. I'm going to come over here, give you a little light, that way you can see what I'm doing. See that adjuster bolt right there? Right there. Alright, you want to tighten that belt unless you got a tension gauge. Just to where you can twist it with a little bit of force. And normally I won't tighten down the upper and lower bolts until I start it up. Because if it's squeaking a little bit, I can adjust it, obviously. Because I'll have to loosen everything back up. And I'm going to run that down some. Alright. Just enough for the alternator is not going to wobble. And we got that bottom bolt, the top bolt started. Let's go ahead and hook up our wires here. And I didn't even mention, uh, always compare your plugs. I already did that before I started making this video. But for y'all at home, if you're doing this at home, Make sure everything looks the same because I've had alternators <laughs> where they'll bolt up and then I gotta plug it in and it's got a different plug. <laughs> and that's nothing pisses you off more than that. Especially for your own your own stupidity. But when you do this for as long as I've been doing it, you you learn on your own behalf. <laughs> Nothing better than having to do something twice for you to learn your lesson. And even and even then, you'll do it twice, sometimes three, four times, and a couple of years later, you'll do it again. Pop that little cover back on so it don't bark against nothing. And touch it. All right, let's go ahead and hook our battery back up. Remember, I tensioned it already. I just haven't tightened those bolts down. I'm going to make sure it doesn't squeak. I can adjust it accordingly. Now, if you're not sure at home when you're doing this, just uh, tighten it, you know, a little bit to where it just has a little tension on it. Start the car up. If it's squeaking, tighten it a little more. And there, you know, you get the hint. Just until it stops squeaking. You can make final adjustments later if it starts squeaking in a couple weeks. But you don't want to over-tighten it because if you over-tighten it, you'll take out the bearing in the alternator or whatever bearing it's riding on. This is riding on, I think, the water pump. So you don't want to take out that bearing because you got to... No, this actually has a little pulley that is an auxiliary. The water pump sits behind it. The water pump sits behind that if I remember doing this timing belt. But still, that has a bearing in it too. 
you don't want to take out that bearing as well. So let's start this bad boy up. That's tight. Always check your battery terminals. Negative. Positive. Turn this bad boy on. Knows that 12.7 volts. That's the jump box power, not the battery. Make sure it's not going to fall down in anything. Let's fire this bad boy up. Already, the battery lights off, and the belt's not squeaking. Oh, but still, this jump box shows voltage too. I forgot about that, so no need to show you that. But I'm gonna let this car run for probably about 20 or 30 minutes with the jump box still hooked up because it acts like a secondary battery until this battery gets a little bit of a charge so I don't strain the new alternator. And I'm going to tighten that top and that bottom bolt just nice and snug. That top one, just, you know, kind of tight. That bottom one, don't get crazy with it because it's a small one. You'll break it and then you'll be replacing the whole tensioner arm or assembly. Anyways, y'all know what to do from here. If y'all like this video, please check like down below. If you haven't subscribed to my channel, please subscribe. Y'all have a good day. Peace out, YouTube.